Greetings everybody and welcome to my review of Sonic the Hedgehog issue 238. Now I would like to say thank you commenters for uh, telling me how to pronounce the uh, matriarch of the wolf pack's name correctly and I will say that name properly um, throughout the rest of this review and all of my future reviews. So yeah, speaking of the Grand Chief Lupe is still strapped to a table waiting to be legionized with Eggman gloating. But then of course, the alarm sounds and on screen, it's Sonic the Hedgehog coming toward the base along with the rest of the group. And of course, Eggman panics and he learns from Orbot that um, the resupply efforts are hours from being done, not to mention they haven't begun repairs yet. But Eggman being desperate decides to just skip all that and get straight to the countdown sequence for launch okay and then of course Sonic and company are pretty much being up Dark Egg Legion members and they decide to uh, split up into two teams the first team will be uh, headed by Tails and it consists of himself, T-Pub, um, Lyco, the twin wearing blue and uh, Emissary Hathor the other team will consist of Sonic himself, um, Amy, and Lita, the twin wearing green. And then of course, um, during the fight outside, um, Sonic encounters Razorclaw again, and this time they get into a tuffle. Meanwhile, um, Tails splits off from uh, Lyco and Emissary Hathor because he has his own little assignment. And um, Lyco and Emissary Hathor Hathor stumble upon uh, Draco and um, Lupe still on the table and Draco is wearing the Queen's robes and of course um, Lupe pretty much explains that um, to Draco that once she is legionized uh, Draco will be demoted and Draco's like not good he, he won't believe this he will not believe this was happening and then of course that's when Lyco decides to ambush uh, Draco and pretty much beat the living snot out of him. And then of course Lupe is free but Hathor decides to not wear the cloak yet because it is not yet time. Meanwhile at the Death Egg, uh, Tails is pretty much installing a tracking device so that they will be able to follow the Death Egg no matter how far it gets. But then of course Mecha Sally shows up and pretty much uh, smacks T-Pup aside and Sally, Mecha Sally is un, under the assumption that uh, she will not, that Tails will not hurt her but um, wrong, Tails uses a spinning tornado move to pretty much uh, actually hit her and she's like you hit me? what? and then of course they get into a little tussle but then of course um, during that little tussle, the Death Egg starts its countdown for launch. Tails is left with two options. Confront Mecha Sally and risk injury when the Death Egg takes off, or retreat with Lupe and the others um, and try and, sa and saving themselves. And Tails took option number two. And of course, as they run from the pyramid, um, uh, Sonic's still engaging his little bout with Razorclaw. Queen Hathor, yeah, she put the robes back on, demands that Sonic uh, carry, her, carry her back to her people, and of course the Death Egg takes off, and of course Eggman is disappointed that he only had enough supplies to invade New Mobotropolis again. And of course um, Eggman needed some options, and of course Mecha Sally offered the suggestion divide and conquer. And then, of course, this Eggman gets the idea of um, paying Sally's the, uh, brother a visit and decides to do some construction, too. So, um, what's he up to? Anyway, everyone except Sonic and Hathor are running from the Dark Egg Legion forces chasing them. And, of course, um, in front of them are a combined force of wolves and cats with Sonic and Hathor in the middle and they're pretty much at the point where the wolves and cats are pretty much being up the uh, Dark Egg Legion members so everything is good there's a tracking device now on the Death Egg so that team fires can follow it wherever 
And of course, uh, the alliance between the cats and the and the wolves are as strong as ever. And I like this little bit right here where the queen and Lupe are shaking hands and they're pretty much squeezing one another like, ah, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Anyway, Sonic and companies decide to take off after them, after the death egg, and pretty much say goodbye to everybody. And then Lita and Loco are pretty much are, admire them. They want to, they want to do something to help out as well in some can in some way. <clears throat> Sorry, can't talk. And then of course Lupe um, pretty much uh, asked them, "Are you ready to leave?" And then of course the twins uh, pretty much are like, "No, no, no, no. We didn't mean that. We didn't mean that." But then of course um, Lupe explained to them that, um, "Are you interested?" In in a secret mission and yeah that's another piece of the puzzle that will lead into the uh, secret freedom fire art in fact the backup story is yet another piece of that puzzle but I will get to that when I get to it um, this uh, first story right here is uh, well to me it, it felt a little bland because um, we knew that Lupe was going to get rescued I mean and uh, we knew that uh, the twins will not get harmed in any way because they appear in the Secret Freedom Fire arc, which is uh, already out. So, yeah. But what, what I think saved this uh, main story, like some were the uh, character moments, some little character moments here and there. Like, uh, for example, um, Draco, for some reason, wearing the Queen's robes. I mean, okay. And then there's uh, the whole bit of um, Tails and Mecha Sa Sally. I mean, Tails actually getting a good hit on Mecha Sally. And it's like, you hit me? And then, of course, Eggman. Eggman, I, I think he's starting to lose his touch a little because, well, I mean, of course, it's a Sonic book and Sonic has to win. But, eh, I think, I think it's starting to come back towards Eggman. I think it's starting to bite him a little bit and stuff because again Sonic's will has not been broken I mean it's been bent but he's managed to come back stronger than ever and I think I think this is the start of it I think this is this is I think this is where things start to really turn around for Sonic and company I mean slowly little baby steps but hopefully we'll start getting things running and all that so yeah and again, I have no comment uh, on Steve Butler's art, so yeah. So overall, I'm going to give this issue a, again, a, well, not the issue, the main story, a, a 7.5 out of 10. I mean, again, it's because there, it's, it's sort of bland here and there, but again, there are character moments that pretty much save the story for me, so yeah. The backup story begins with Harvey Hu and Nicole inspecting the underground base underneath New Mobotropolis. You know, the same base that was used during the Iron Dominion invasion way back in issue 210. So yeah. Anyway, Harvey Hu likes it because it's simple and his motto is keep things simple. Of course, Uncle Chuck is also in this base assisting in the reconstruction of Shard the Hedgehog using a number of uh, destroyed uh, Metal Sonic and Metal Scourge parts and of course um, some also some uh, Metal Sonic troopers are used in the reconstruction as well and of course um, they get into a little banter on how Shard almost killed his nephew but then of course Shard turns it around saying that his nephew taught Shard uh, what it means to have life, as seen all the way back in issue 87. And then, of course, um, Shard also um, blurted out that it was his core data that allowed Uncle Chuck to build all the Metal Sonic Troopers. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a nice little tidbit. Yeah, um... So it, it would imply that at some point, possibly during Sonic's year in space, that Uncle Chuck and company managed to salvage a shard from underneath the molten lava and used him as a template to create the Metal Sonic Troopers. But if you're, if you're folks are wondering, um, 
Um, how, how did Uncle Chuck know? How did they know where uh, where Shard is? Well, it's possible Sonic and Tails probably told everyone of the incident, or if they haven't, Tails um, was also present and uh, could have told them the location if they were starting the Metal Sonic Trooper project. And, and but uh, whatever. Uh, I'm just trying to bring some logic, which is uh, kind of difficult. Now, <clears throat> anyway, pretty much the problem with uh, Uncle Chuck and Nicole here being in this uh, secret base underneath New Marbotropolis is because Nicole is supposed to be in exile, and Uncle Chuck is still on the council. And if Uncle Chuck is found, ha is discovered to be working with Harvey Who, and uh, he can get in big trouble. But then, of course, uh, it's an old habit of Uncle Chuck's. It's a night. This whole thing with Uncle Chuck working, like from the inside against a powerful enemy, it does fall back into the days of um, him being roboticized and um, pretty much feeding information to the Freedom Fighters. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little nod to the earlier days of the comic and Sad AM. So yeah. Anyway, Nicole got a transmission that um, that Chief Lupe is has confirmed that her uh, the Wolf Twins are pretty much in. They're pretty much joining the Secret Freedom Fighters, and of course Harvey uh, orders Nicole to arrange transportation for them because they they gotta be here soon, and they will be here soon. And then of course um, Harvey who as we discover has been uh, trying to recruit freedom fires from other regions and um, he says that his team is lacking something because as of right now they got uh, the time traveler silver shard who is on his way to being rebuilt the wolf twins and then of course he's looking for something with unpredictability and speaking of which in comes Larry Lynx falling down the tube as previously seen in Sonic uh, Universe uh, issue 41. And then of course um, Uncle Chuck and Nicole are panicking because they do, they do not want to be discovered. And I like this little motion of Uncle Chuck's like, oh, nothing to see here! Nope, not here! And Nicole's trying to disappear quickly. And then of course we get to the whole familiar, familiar conversation of um, Harvey, who's like, oh, you're Larry the Lynx. You, um, you once lead the Substitute Freedom Fighters. You have skills that I would love to have on a certain team and all that stuff. And then, of course, uh, yeah, that's where the issue ends. With the, with the uh, recruitment of uh, Larry Lynx. Now, um, this uh, backup issue is um, pretty much... Uh, well, what it does is it's more set up towards the Secret Freedom Fighter arc. And... Um, it's going to make some people upset because um, uh, because they want sometimes people don't want stories to interconnect between two different books but um, if you have a spin-off series in the same universe as your parent series sometimes crossovers do happen and sometimes people like them sometimes people hate them sometimes they want a book that's completely separate from the main book but hey Personally, I like the crossovers myself. At least it'll, at least it'll get the story moving along and finished quickly, and that's my opinion. But hey, now this backup story because it does help answer a few more questions. I'm going to give the backup story an eight out of ten, and um, something tells me we haven't seen the last of uh, this kind of setup. I have a feeling we're going to see more setup as the Secret Freedom Fire arc progresses. So yeah. So, that's it. That's issue 238. And, um, thank you guys for watching this review, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye now.